you'll find. Don't forget to tag us at dot, And we have a rockin' and, and, and love hearts and parks. And I have this, believe it or not, we have the Queen of Hearts here. Well, the Queen of Hearts, come right in. Welcome, welcome to the Queen of Hearts. So Queen of Hearts, you'd like to say a couple of words and then I'd like you to join me up here and we take a, a little photo. You'd like to share something with us? Valentine's Day with us at the park. Uh, come out and find some of these rocks of love that we've worked so hard on in the whole recreation department. Um, we had some amazing artists that work with our students and our children from our schools. Mm -hmm. So we have a poster where if you see them around the city, you can actually scan the barcode and remember to use, if you find one, go ahead and remember to use the hashtag um, Oxnard together. So we can get some kids out and some families out and have some fun. And, and thank you Terrell too for bringing the, the queen with us. And queen, you wanna join me up here and we'll take a quick photo? Sure, of course. Come. Do I go? Come, yes. so. Come this way. No, no. And I have my own rock already, so. <laughs> <laughs> No, I wish I did. <laughs> okay, here we go. Yeah, I just want to add the point that the city manager does not support Valentine's Day. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Put your hands together for the Queen of Hearts. You know. Thank you, Terrell. And don't forget to look for uh, Carell. Terrell, how many rocks do we have out there uh, for, for our residents? So good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we have a total of 53 parks in the city and we will have 1,500 rocks, over 1,500 rocks spread yeah. out throughout the community that families and, and young people could find uh, on Valentine's Day. You know, with uh, COVID-19 and, and, and the gathering, make sure that you wear your, your mask. Yes. Six feet distancing. Wash your hands and, and don't gather. Correct. Six feet apart. Look for your rocks six feet apart. Correct. Thank you so much. Thank you really, very much. Thank you to the Queen and to you. Thank you so much for the, for the Recreation Commission. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, our next item is the uh, Finance uh, Department. This is uh, a proposed City Council policy for development and implementation of internal control. And we have, uh, as you know, we have a recommendation that the Finance and Governance Committee provide feedback on a proposed City Council policy for development and implementation of an internal controls and, uh, uh, and, and, and uh, recommend that the City Council approve this, this policy. And um, we do have, um, this is an, uh, it was on video, right? Then we have, who is, uh, Ms. Ventura, the Ventura? assistant CFO, is here to answer your questions on this item. Do we have any questions for uh, Ventura? Council members? Well, um, let me share. Um, I'm, I'm sure that uh, we already took care of um, item one, two, and three, and four, which is the adoption of the internal control integrated framework, adoption of internal control over site responsibilities, the financing committee. Uh, committee's duties and responsibilities and uh, the assignment of authority and responsibilities. That was um, taken care of on, on the September the 1st of 20, of 20, and also the performance evaluation of the city manager and city attorney that was previously in place, put in place. And then also we had the risk assessment that was adopted in, in, in uh, January 5th of 2021. And now we're looking at the control activities information, communication, and monitoring activities, seven and so the recommendation, uh, council members is to, um, to recommend to the Oxnard City Council for the approval of this proposed policy. Do we have any questions from anyone else uh, on this item? I, I don't have any speakers on this item at all. So, so council members, uh, do we have a motion or do you have any questions? Or? No, I, I don't have any questions. Um, and if we don't have any questions, I'll make the motion. 
Thank you, Councilwoman Basua. And second? Uh, Chair Saragossa? Yes, sir. I, I do actually have a question. Um, I'm wondering if uh, Ms. Ventura, uh, for the benefit of the public, mm -hmm. in just a couple of minutes, would you um, very briefly explain to the public exactly what our internal controls are? Um, our uh, mayor did a great job of summarizing the ones that have already been adopted previously, but just what's in front of us and what the intention of is, is behind them for the organization. Right, so um, the internal control integrated framework is a best practice standard that has been put forward by um, the committee of sponsoring organizations of the Treadway Commission, the mouthful, shortened for COSO, um, that was um, adopted back in the 90s, I believe, and uh, became very um, prevalent after a lot of um, very um, visible corporate scandals in the private sector, like um, Enron and WorldCom, those kinds of situations. So um, basically it's a framework to um, ensure that we have a system of internal controls, checks and balances, and um, various, you know, sort of oversight and monitoring and, you know, general tone at the top about how important it is for us to have strong internal controls as stewards of the, you know, um, basically the taxpayers and the residents, you know, funds. Um, so this framework is being implemented in stages because it's a fairly large um, undertaking. Um, but it is essentially formalizing the intent of strengthening and um, enforcing and monitoring internal controls to prevent and detect fraud or even just you know um, inadvertent errors that are that can occur in the process of your um, financial accounting and reporting. Thank you. Um, uh, any additional questions? Uh, do we have a second on this item? Uh, before I add the second, I just want to thank um, our assistant CFO, Ms. Ventura, for that brief explanation. And it's very important because the city's working so much on transparency and um, correcting uh, any kind of uh, structural issues we had in the organization in the past. And I hope the public can understand and appreciate just the, the scale and what the intention is behind this, because um, I think the easiest way to understand it is if you have a cash box at a snack bar, you have two people with eyes on that all the time. And you have any, there's never any one person who's in charge of just that one thing. The same person who collects money, the money isn't the same person who fills out the deposit slip and deposits the money or withdraws the money. So I hope everybody can understand that. And I thank you for, for that brief explanation. And I will go ahead and second um, the motion. Thank you, Council Member. And before we take a motion, uh, I want to thank you for that too, because this nine items is uh, really important for all of us. It's an internal control, you know, for the framework of the city of Oxnard, and it's well put. And, and I want to thank you know our our staff for that. So, roll call. Mayor Saragossa. Yes. Council Member Basua. Yes. Council Member Taran. Yes. Thank you. Motion carries three to zero. Thank you. And that's approved. Our next item is the finance department. Again, this is audit. This is uh, subject is audit committee training by Eddie and Pine. And the recommendation is for the finance committee, the governance committee to receive a training presentation from Eddie and Pine on Payne, excuse me, on the roles and responsibility of the audit committees. And eventually this is going to go to the other committees for, for their approval. No, we're not. Okay, this for us. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, with that in mind, Kevin, you want to, or Shuri? Okay, so we have um, with us three members of Edie and Payne. They are, as you know, our external auditors, and they have um, graciously offered to do some training for us. Thank you. Um, they are doing a four part series, and so this is. Uh, it's four one hour blocks of training that they're going to be doing for the finance and governance committee on 
how to read these um, audits and what it is that we should all be paying attention to. So we have Hong, Eden, and Mary on Zoom, and I'll let them. And, and Sherry, just to clarify that this is only going to be for the Finance and Governance Committee. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. who's, thank you, welcome. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, members of the committee. Um, welcome to this first session of a four-part series. Um, it's our pleasure to uh, provide you um, with this um, uh, information. So um, before we begin, I wanted to I wanted to introduce us first. So uh, my name is Eden Casareno, and um, I am a, a partner in charge of uh, a test services for EDN Payne. I have been um, the auditor of uh, the auditor partner in charge of Oxnard's audit for the past six years. And uh, this year, we, I am uh, passing the baton to Hong Nguyen um, because we are complying with the, we are complying with the, um, what I would call requirement by the state for uh, audit partner rotation every six years. So Ms. Ms. Nguyen is the youngest partner of EDN Payne. Uh, she is uh, also the partner in charge of our municipal services and has over 12 years as an auditor. Um, this Mary Maction um, is the youngest star at our firm, just recently promoted to senior manager. Uh, she has four years experience as an auditor plus another couple of years in industry. She also holds a um, certificate in advanced single audits from AICPA. Um, so now that you know us, um, I would like to, you know, we'd like to get to know you a little as well. Um, so if we could go around the Zoom room and um, if you can tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, tell us what, you know, if you've served in an audit committee or finance committee before, uh, a little bit about your experience there, and also what you'd like to get out of these training series. Is that okay? Okay, thank you. Um, um, Councilwoman Member Sue, I'd like to share a couple of words. If, if... Sure, um, thank you. Thank you for that introduction. Um, a little bit about me, I guess. Um, I actually do have experience with audits. Um, I currently work for another um, city and I am in charge of making sure um, that part of our CAFR and our annual audits are um, an audit of financials um, get done. So um, I am looking forward to this class. See what else I can learn. Thank you, uh, Council Member uh, Tehran. Thank you very much. Um, I am uh, recently appointed to the council and just joined the Finance and Governance Committee for this meeting. This is my first meeting. And as far as my experience in audits, I've certainly been on the other side of programmatic audits for my job. I work for a um, county, the County Office of Education. And um, so I've been on that side and know the importance of having all of our um, ducks in a row and making sure all of our documentation is there and accessible. And so um, now being on, on this side, getting training in reading this and uh, from the auditors themselves, I'm looking forward to it. So. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to the information. You know, and thank you so much. I'm uh, Mayor uh, John Zaragoza. And uh, just to share with you, I, I was a policymaker with the city of Oxnard for 12 years before I, I got elected in 1996. I uh, here for the board of, for the city council and mayor pro tem for four of those years. And then I got elected in 2008 to the board of supervisors for another 12 years. And I was the chairman of the board there for a couple of times. And now I'm blessed to come back to Oxnard here. I've been here for a couple of months. And I've um, been through quite a few budgets, quite a few CAFRs, and, and really looking at audits and, and, and taking responsibility for, for listening to those audits and making sure that hopefully the audits are correct with what staff is doing. But 
like I always said, you always learn something. And it's really an honor for me to be here today to learn more of, about audits and, and how we can help the, the city of Oxnard be more responsible and be more transparent. And, and, and I think it's important that under the Finance and Governance Committee that, that we need a little bit more training. And thank you so much and welcome to Oxnard again. Thank you very much for sharing that information. Um, so um, I understand that you all have uh, different levels of um, experience and understanding of audits. So, you know, during this, um, you know, training series, we would like this to be more interactive, you know, just ask your questions um, as we go along. We don't need to wait for the very end. Um, and, um, you know, in certain sections, we will stop and, um, you know, probably obtain some of your comments or, or questions if you have any. So Thank anyway, you. Hong, please go ahead and take it away. Public comment. Oh, we did not receive public comment. We do have a public comment. We do not. No, no public comments. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Kwan. You can go ahead and start. Mm -hmm. Unmute. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I will start off this um, first session, this first training session. Like mentioned before, um, this first session is about we want to just give you a broad overview of well, what we think your responsibilities are as uh, being a member of the Finance and Governance Committees. The, th the three next sessions. We will cover uh, more in-depth financial reporting, so how to read your financials or key items uh, to review of the financial statements. Then we'll actually also go more in-depth into uh, internal controls and the realm of internal controls, all that pertains to uh, you know, internal controls and your ICIF. And then finally, we'll, we will do a session with you where we'll go more in depth into risk management and uh, risk assessment. So that is still to come. Today's a, a broad overview to kind of get you into the mindset um, of, of uh, you know, being on the committee um, for, for the next year to come. So, what we'll cover today, I will go over the general overview, then um, we'll talk about your um, your responsibility as it relates to financial reporting, um, overview of inter uh, your responsibilities relating to internal control, your auditors, external and internal, risk management, and ethics and compliance. Like Eden said, um, we'll, we'll, we'll cover each area, but we really would appreciate if you, uh, you know, just uh, don't hesitate to ask questions or comments um, as we go along. So uh, in terms of the overview of uh, your responsibilities as a member of the Finance and Governance Committee, um, your authority was set up or was uh, the, the committee was set up through an ordinance where the city council uh, has uh, delegated some of their responsibilities to these committees. So uh, the, the, the formation of the committees, the, um, of, uh, the appointments, these are all set through this ordinance. How many times you're meeting, you're meeting twice a month. And um, that there will be bylaws to set forth your powers and duties. These particular bylaws, um, we, I've listed the resolution, gives you authority to um, review and provide oversight over um, specific items of concern uh, relating to specific departments. So the departments that are in, under the purview of the Finance and Governance Committee uh, is the City Manager's Department, the Finance Department, the City Treasurer's Department, Human Resources, City Clerk, and IT. So um, as, as you uh, can imagine, this is, uh, these are all key departments uh, of the city that, and uh, the operations of the city 
as it relates to financial reporting and just day-to-day -day management. Um, so uh, as you see in the graph uh, on the right, you know, key roles you play in there is just general governance and then also uh, your, your finance function as to how these departments operate um, are key. Besides uh, departmental oversight, you also um, uh, were given authority to directly oversee the internal auditors. And um, as you just discussed, um, uh, internal controls over the city or your uh, internal, integra internal control integrated framework, ICIF. And uh, we really are, um, very encouraged to see uh, the amount of time and effort um, that management has put in and then with your guidance as well to you know continue to approve these policies and uh, you know like you mentioned before really get the city to um, expand um, their 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 uh, roles and responsibilities as it relates to internal control so we as auditors um, we we really encourage that as well um, so and, and um, you know are very uh, also encouraged to see how much of a role that uh, U.S. committee members and then also as city council members uh, are playing in that. So in terms uh, of um, assisting you in your oversight responsibilities, uh, there are key policies and procedures that will help um, provide a framework for you um, to uh, to to act uh, in your function. So examples of these, uh, I re we listed a few key ones, are um, your general accounting and purchasing policies. Uh, a lot of the policies that you're passing now with in, as it relates to internal control framework, that uh, of course is a big part of it. Um, then you also have budgetary policies as you're um, approving the budgets each year. You know, there are resolutions with, um, with, with your policies and procedures as it relates specifically to budgets included in there um, as it relates to the city treasurer's department. You have um, an investment policy um, that um, gives you gives you uh, as the city and the treasurer the parameters of what can be done with your investments. Um, furthermore, there are uh, other policies like a conflict of interest policies that can provide you more guidance in terms of risk management uh, and the parameters of what can be done within um, general policies and procedures. Um, I also wanted to add that we actually, as part of, you know, um, putting this training together, we uh, went through a lot of your documentation. So we will put together uh, a package for you with these, um, the ordinances or any policies and procedures or documentation that we found useful in putting the training together. And we will um, be providing that to you so that you have one big package. Um, that, that will assist you in your overall um, duties. So um, this is the broad overview. Um, do you have any questions so far? I have a quick question, you know, as auditors, your job then is to uh, look over the, uh, the financial uh, uh, statuses of, of the city and internal controls, external controls and so forth, and recommend to staff any uh, items that they uh, or any deficiencies that they should correct or 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 commend staff as to what we're doing to continue doing the 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 correct uh, budgeting procedures and overview of the financial reports and so forth is that correct um yes that's correct uh although i have to say that you know uh, when we go and audit it's a very much a year and picture so you know, we do sample throughout the year, but those are just samples, right? So we cannot look at 100% of things. Right. And that's where we as auditors 
um, really recommend that you know you put systems in place, procedures and regular systems, and oversight um, uh, procedures and monitoring procedures that you know what even when we're not there, you can rely on management's assertions and management's oversight that all the transactions are happening uh, as they should with the proper oversight. And like uh, council member Tehran said, with proper segregation of duties. So mm -hmm. um, we definitely um, sample and make recommendations based on what we see and sample as part of our audit but we we are we cannot be there every throughout the whole year. I I don't think management would be, want us there anyhow. So, um, so so the other question I have is uh, as auditors, then you also uh, look at the investments and, and the risk of the investments that the city has, and make recommendations accordingly. We 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 are not an investment advisors, okay. so that that would not be under our purview. What we would look at is. You know what does management do to uh we we do look at the investment policy so are you within your policies that's, right so you're that's what i was alluding to that's what I was yes to. oh yes definitely yes and then we make sure that you know your uh financial statements and your disclosures are properly presenting you know what the city is doing with their investments so um the the CAFR is pretty expansive on the investments that you're holding and things like that. Thank you, uh, council members. Before they proceed, do you have any questions on, on this item, on the overview? Okay, if not, we'll continue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mary will uh, go over the financial reporting. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Mary. I will start with the oversight of financial reporting. Um, so what is exactly meant by that? What's meant by that is that the finance and governance should be familiar with processes and controls that are currently in place that allow the city to produce accurate and reliable financial reports in a timely manner. And these processes could include month monthly reconciliations and reporting and of peer checklists, periodic analysis, etc. Also important to be aware of are the significant accounting policies. Um, Hong briefly touched on them, but they're also included in the city's CAFR starting on page 48 in this year's report. And they include information on financial statement presentation, any new accounting pronouncements that have been applied during the fiscal year or are coming up. Um, and also a very high level accounting uh, treatment of your significant balances. Um, it also explains management's use of estimates and just judgments for certain balances and assertions and the finance committee should be sufficiently aware of them and to be able to say they're comfortable that these estimates are reasonable and without bias. Um, oversight of financial reporting also includes succession planning and that's where key staff of um, in the reporting process so even if you have a perfectly working process right now, um, you have to keep in mind what happens if one of the key members retires or separates from the city. Will there be someone who will be able to take over that person for some responsibilities or will it create a gap until a replacement has been recruited? Those are questions you would wanna ask um, your members as well as your department heads to be prepared for that scenario in case it arises and have a place uh, have a plan in place to allow for the most efficient transition. And then also in the slide is fraud risk. Um, there are three types of fraud that can affect financial reporting. Uh, one of them is the intentional um, manipulation of financial statements. And this could mean um, either intentional over or understatements of balances to manufacture fav more favorable fiscal results, um, asset misappropriation, which means theft or misuse of city assets, or corruption, which could mean um, kickback um, contracts, as well as bribery, if there's any of that. Can I share Maybe, a quick, quick, quick question oh. on the, the financial statement presentation? Can you share a little bit more on that, uh, on the financial pr statement presentation? 
Mm -hmm. Yes. So the financial statement presentation, you mean when I spoke about the significant accounting policies? Yeah, yes. 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 Um, so there are pages in the CAFR that you can refer to, but what that basically means, it explains what your different um, statements mean. So you have your governmental funds and their um, a specific way of reporting on that. It's your governmental uh, modified accrual. And then there's your full accrual for your enterprise funds, such as your utilities, your water, your um, environmental services, as well as your uh, sewer services. The enterprise funds, okay. Yes, so that goes in more detail into that. Um, and as Hong has mentioned before, we will have multiple sessions. We will deep, uh, we will dive deeper into that uh, during our session number two where we will distinguish between your two reporting um, methods, your modified accrual, as well as your full accrual um, in more detail. And I, and I think that, and, and that uh, oversight, I think that succession planning is extremely important here. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so going back to your awareness of fraud, being observant of what's happening within the city, um, allows you to flag these early enough to start investigating or work with management and the respective departments to find solutions to mitigate the risk as early as, you know, the first red flag comes up versus trying to repair the damages. You always want to be there very early on and tackle it uh, head on. Okay. Did you have any other questions on this slide? Uh, no uh, council members. Okay, if not then we'll go ahead and con we'll continue. Or okay. um, Councilman Wait, Turan, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, Councilman Turan, oh. did you have a question? He's muted. No. I was I was wondering if I had a question or not. I think I'm good to continue. I, okay. I'm taking notes here too. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Sounds good. Okay, moving on to the next slide. It's still part of your oversight of financial reporting. Um, so here I want to talk about the review of any interim or annual financial statements, and of course your audited financial statements once they become available. Um, I can imagine that what you are uh, most interest in, interested in knowing is, okay, this, this is such a thick document, what is it that you want us to focus on, right? So what you want to look at, um, for, let's start with financial reports. That's your CAFR. Are any big shifts in balances from one year to the other? So if you notice that a cash um, changed significantly from last year to this year, you would want to be able to go to your treasurer, for instance, and just get an understanding of what happened. Did we change um, policies or our practices in maintaining um, cash balances versus investments just have a gen you don't know you don't have to know the details behind it but have enough understanding to know okay that's the reason why there's such a shift um and then there's also if there are any instances that you are aware of where significant or unusual for the particular accounting period you would want to see if you can find those explained in the reports or highlighted in the reports. And if you can find them, you know, you have your finance department there to be able to point you towards the right direction, just to double check if, you know, they're properly disclosed for your um, financial statement users. Um, in addition to your CAFR, there's also the single audit report, which is a report that we will be releasing um, by March um, of this year, that one is more focused on your compliance requirements with your major grant programs and federal programs. Um, being aware of that and making sure that, okay, we are still in compliance. We don't have to worry about um, potentially losing uh, funding because we're not complying to these is also a very important for you to keep track of. So um, a single audit report is also something you might wanna look at and any other communication with other official agencies, you might wanna just have an overview of, okay, what is it that they're looking for? Are we still good? Is there something we need to um, uh, 
shift management's attention to to just make sure that the city is still on track. And then lastly, we have management letters, which is an additional document that we provide uh, to note any recommendations we might have to uh, we might have that. Uh, we've noticed during the course of our audit that could improve your processes or suggest any additional best practices the city might benefit on. And my understanding too is that the last uh, CAFRA we had, we had uh, a very good uh, report from you folks on that. There's some management letters you're talking about. Yes, the, um, the last year CAFRA is actually had a clean report. A so clean that, report. Is, that is correct. The city did really, really well. Um, we did issue a management, oh, I don't think we have issued a management letter yet that would come along with um, the issuance of the single audit report. That's usually where we highlight any significant deficiencies or material weaknesses, if there were any that we've noticed. And the, your management letter is more focused on any best practices. Thank um, you. Yes, excellent question. Mm -hmm. Um, this document, um, I think, would also be to your benefit because it includes the, your management's responses to our recommendations. So that is uh, a good starting point for any conversations or follow ups that you might have with them and just to double check where, where they are in addressing those recommendations and what they have been doing in implementing in working towards implementing them. Okay, I think this is a good stopping point for any questions, um, if there are any. Um, the next slide will be addressing a new topic, so ask ahead. Council members, any questions? Um, uh, if not, then uh, we'll go ahead and continue. Okay, fantastic. Um, moving on, it's um, your oversight duties of internal control. Let's start this section off with a brief definition of internal control. An internal control is a process designed to provide reasonable assurance regarding the achievement of objectives related to operations, operating, uh, uh, reporting, and compliance. And um, for the Finance and Governance Committee, the two items that you would um, mainly focus on would be the reporting and the compliance um, aspects of it. Um, and your, your financial reporting, uh, I mean, your internal control over financial reporting are more focused on your daily operations of the city. Um, and so what are the things you would wanna look into? These are items that council member Tehran me uh, mentioned earlier, such as, you know, your various cycles, cash receipt, cash disbursement or payroll even questions you might want to ask while you're trying to understand the processes are who is responsible for this versus that are there is there sufficient segregation of duties to prevent any malicious activities um, that might happen so that, that's what um, internal control over financial reporting is mostly concerned about whereas um, your internal control over compliance looks more into your laws and regulations and contracts. Are you within your grant agreements? Are you complying with the minimum requirements and compliance requirements? And also looking at any potential abuses. Um, moving on to the next slide. Um, and this is something, I think this is a good timing because uh, Donna briefly talked about this earlier, but one of the, models that we always recommend to our clients is the internal control integrated framework, ICIF for short. And as um, mentioned by Donna earlier, it was introduced um, and published by the Committee of Sponsoring Organizations back in 1992 in response of some very serious fraud, um, fraudulent events. And what it is, it's um, it's a principles-based approach, and you can see an image of the model to the right. Um, I like to call that the COSO cube, mm -hmm. um, and it lets you take a look at, um, it lets you see the five components of this model very clearly, uh, which are control environment, risk assessment, control activities, information and communication and mentoring activities, 
And these five components are all supposed to be intertwined with the city's operating activities and built into the city's infrastructure. That's when it's most effective and that's when it's most automated and um, um, beneficial for the city. We will get into more detail on this one um, in our workshop number three, I believe, but I will give you a quick overview of it today. Okay. Um, just, just as an appetizer, kind of like mm -hmm. a teaser. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, uh, like I said, the five items are at the front of the cube. So what's the first one? The first one is your control environment. It represents the foundation of an organization. It's basically the base of a city. This is where the finance committee comes in and the city council, because this is where you set the tone at the top by providing and showing your city employees the ethical values of you know your day-to-day -day operations share any code of conduct that the city has implemented and also of course leading by example um, that sets the tone of the organizations and it lets your employees know or gives them a guideline of okay this is what the big guys are doing this is how you know yeah I, I think that's extremely important you know for managerial practices you know because that way all the employees and managers are on the same page Absolutely, yeah. It, getting your employees on the same page and understanding that you're all working towards the same goal and values, um, it's absolutely important for a strong cultural environment at work. And, and they right? understand that, and they understand the, the budget con constraints and so forth. So, <laughs> right, <laughs> <laughs> getting their buy-in on that, yeah, absolutely. And that's uh, the other components kind of touch on that as well. Um, I'll I'll mention that later on. So risk assessment is another one. So what's risk assessment in, in a nutshell, right? It's having an ongoing process for identifying, analyzing, and managing your risks. And this includes looking at internal and external factors that the city might not have any control over and um, applying that to your organization and having to uh, evaluate whether or not you have to adapt certain processes, certain procedures that might have been working perfectly in the past, but because of a new variable, you might want to look into tweaking that a little bit to fit the new environment, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have control activities. Control activities is a fancy word for your policies and procedures. Um, those are the actions that you have established in response of your risk assessment and in, in the previous experiences you've had in your organization. Their purpose is to mitigate any risks or prevent or detect any errors before they arise, um, hopefully. And, and if not, once they've detected that, you can um, maneuver them in a way that you can still minimize the damages and get everything back um, under control. Okay. And then we have uh, information and communication. This is focused on communication, uh, communicating information to people in the right format and also at the right time. And this includes in, um, internal as well as external communication. And this mayor is where you uh, your point comes across is getting your city staff on board and having them understand, okay, we, ha we are facing budget cuts, but why? We're all working towards the same overall goal that we want to make the city operations more effective, you know? Public service. Public service, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, I'm almost done, I promise. <laughs> lastly, we have your monitoring activities. These are your ongoing assessments to make sure the quality and operation of your control activities, that's your policies and procedures, are still functioning as they were intended and that they are still addressing all the items that you um, designed them to address. So it's functioning as intended and still being effective. Um, um, okay, and then all these five components are actually broken down further into 17 principles, but that is something that you will have to wait for <laughs> until our workshop number three, and um, I promise it will be very interesting, <laughs> but until then, do you have any other questions that you want me to address before I pass it on to Eden?
Any uh, council members, any questions? Uh, uh, council member Turan. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for sharing that. I was uh, taking notes on this and hearing the elaboration on each of the five components. And I think it comes down to uh, when we look at control environment, especially, that's almost the base and you're looking at your organizational culture. What wow. is acceptable, what's not acceptable, what the expectations are of uh, the executive staff, the middle management and the frontline staff. And that goes both ways in, in if I'm hearing correctly that what's expected of everybody is what will occur for the most part. And when things happen that are out of bounds, how that's reacted to by uh, those with the, um, the authorization to react to that kind of determines the, the next steps or vibes of people who um, saw that happen or move forward with it. So organizational culture, I, I, that's kind of how I saw that. Um, and then everything else builds from there. So thank you for the explanation. That's great. I look forward to the third version of this now. You did a great commercial for it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Excellent <laughs> observation, I agree. Councilman Basua. Okay, she's... Yeah, no, I, I've got no questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I, uh, I think it's just so important, you know, as you mentioned, this is not just for the managers, but for the employees to understand the whole concept of, uh, of control and, and also uh, to understand, uh, again, you know, what their responsibilities are. Very, very important. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much for um, such an uh, interactive audience. <laughs> I would like to pass it on to Eden. She has additional information for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mary. Um, so uh, we identified a couple of things um, that the audit committee is responsible for when it comes to overseeing the external auditor and also the internal auditor. So I wanted to um, first cover your oversight of external auditor. Um, the uh, first the first bullet point there says appointment, compensation, and oversight. So that's very straightforward, really. The city's practice is to go out um, for uh, a request for proposals every five years to um, hire the external auditor. That is a very common practice in California governments. Um, the process is led by the finance department, but the audit committee or uh, the finance and governance committee is heavily involved in that process um, as well, reviewing the proposals, as well as conducting the interviews. So one thing to be mindful of um, is the requirement by the state of California for an audit partner rotation every six years. Um, if you are not replacing the accounting firm within that period, uh, within that six year period, um, you gotta make sure that the um, accounting firm um, actually rotates the audit partner. And that's what we're doing uh, this year with um, me handing over the, the baton to Hong because I have been here, uh, you know, six years in a row. So, so that um, item, that item is mandated, right? That do we, that we rotate. That mandated by the state it's of a Hong. mandated item. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so moving on to non-audit services. So like most cities, Oxnard's auditors provide other services that are referred to as non-audit services. Um, examples of these are the preparation of the CAFR or assistance in the preparation of the CAFR, um, assistance with implementation of say new GASB pronouncements, um, preparation of uh, SEO reports as well. So uh, those non-audit services are required to be um, um, disclosed to you as the audit committee. Uh, you should know what those non-audit services are and approve them. Mm -hmm. So they are usually um, disclosed within the audit engagement letter and also the contract that would be signed by the auditor. Um, but qualifications and independence of auditors. Uh, there is a myth, I think, out there that all auditing firms are equal. Uh, if, you know, sometimes people think they are, if they are licensed by the state, that they must be qualified. Uh, but 
um, that is partially true. They cannot be licensed by the state if they're not qualified, uh, but not all auditing firms are equal. You need to look at the qualifications, um, specifically the qualifications and experience of their people. Um, you need to inquire about their experience in similar agencies um, like cities uh, similar to yours. Um, ask them about their use of technology. So, and, and um, very important, do a background check and reference check uh, when you are um, hiring new auditors. Uh, and also conduct interviews. Um, you, you know, we've been through some RFPs with other um, cities where they don't even conduct interviews. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know how they determine the uh, qualifications of um, auditors when they don't do that. Um, independence is one of those qualifications that are also mandated, required by auditing standards. Um, always check with, um, you know, whether the auditors have any relationships with the city uh, or any of its officials. Uh, that's one of the reasons why some cities may not want a local firm to do their audit. Uh, because they, you know, the people within that firm may have relationships with um, city officials. Mm -hmm. Non-audit services can also impair independence <clears throat> when they, when auditors perform certain services like consulting or accounting, uh, information technology or IT. Um, there are certain surf safeguards that the auditors are required to do to ensure that their independence is not impaired. So uh, that would be a good question to, um, to ask your auditors um, when you get to talk to them. Uh, audit plan and scope of, uh, of the audit. Uh, some of the things to consider there is when you review the um, audit plan is timing. Uh, as a government entity, you have some deadlines you have to meet, um, you know, for the state, uh, sometimes for the federal agencies that you, where you receive uh, federal grants and also to bondholders. So those are something that you need to be aware of. Uh, I'm sure the finance department has like a, all of these uh, deadlines um, uh, on top of my, of their minds. So um, they could provide you more information on that. Mm -hmm. uh, resolution of difficulties or disagreements um, does not necessarily mean you're going to be the referee between the auditor and the finance department. Um, <laughs> but some of <laughs> they should say an example. Uh, so the past few years of our audits of Oxnard um, has been, you know, had been um, smooth sailing, but it was not always like that. Uh, back in, you know, 2015, 2016, when we first started, uh, the city council acting as the audit committee at that time uh, was involved in uh, providing management direction and resources, that's very important, in order to overcome some of the challenges facing the auditors um, uh, during that year including authorizing hiring of temps and outside consultants to catch up with the accounting work that needed to be done. So those records can be audited. So that's just one of one example where um, the audit committee uh, has to step in to in order to um, assist and make sure that the audit is completed. Yeah. Um, Review of auditors' reports and communications, as you know, as you've experienced here in the past few years, uh, we, you know, as auditors, we come and uh, report to you um, directly to the audit committee as well as to the city council. Uh, there are usually three reports that we do. Um, the first one is the CAFR. You've seen that um, just recently. Uh, a single audit report, which we will do in March. And then um, uh, this, th this uh, the third one is not really a report, but rather a letter. It is a formal letter um, that we 
um, provide to members of the audit committee or the finance and governance committee and the city council. It summarizes the relevant audit concerns that the audit committee should know. So um, that is a only a letter, but that is um, only uh, written to you, the members of the city council. Um, and then of course, you know, as in any business relationship, you as the client should evaluate the auditors. Um, this does not have to be a formal process, but we encourage uh, all our clients to provide feedback uh, anytime during the audit, after the audit, before the audit. Um, you know, we are available to you um, to provide us your feedback. Um, you know, before the end of this um, presentation, we will provide you all of our emails and, you know, phone numbers. Um, feel free to use them. Okay. I think, you know, that's an excellent checklist on uh, hiring auditors and uh, make sure that uh, that RFP, you know, is is uh, relevant, you know, and so forth. And, and I'm sure that Kevin is looking and nodding yes. It's really important. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So um, a next slide, please. Mm -hmm. I wanted to show you um, a list of things to consider in your oversight of the external auditor. So um, Mr. Mayor, you were asking earlier what you know the external auditor does and what to expect from them. So mm -hmm. these are some of the expectations of the external auditor. Um, I have discussed um, independence. I have discussed like, you know, you, they, they, have, they should have the knowledge and skills and experience that is required of them. Uh, but the other thing that you, is very important is quality control. Um, quality control is a, um, just like, you know, you have your own internal control, the auditors have to have those too. Um, so we actually go through a, um, a peer review or an evaluation of our quality control of our audits every three years. And that uh, is done by another independent accounting firm. So uh, that is what we call a peer review that is done every three years. And that report um, is required to be made public, um, including any findings available, uh, made available to you. So if you haven't seen that before, uh, you know, uh, we can provide that information to you that uh, our, our last report was in 2019. So we will have another one here next Year. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it's also included in your um, engagement letter every year. So you will be able to see that uh, the next time you see our engagement letter. Mm -hmm. uh, the last two bullet points um, are planning and risk assessment and communication. They are very interrelated. Um, auditors are also required to communicate with you. Uh, their plan for the audit, which includes their approach to risk assessment. Uh, this is usually communicated uh, through the audit engagement letter. And then um, the, the other communication that we do is the, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the governance letter at the end of the audit. And then um, just remember that we are supposed to report to you. So anytime you have any questions or uh, any concerns, um, comments to us, feedback, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So any questions on this? I think the important thing is independence. That's what I see here. Yes, very the, important. Uh, and the oversight of the external uh, auditor. Yeah. Council members, any questions? Uh, Okay, if not, we'll continue. So um, before I continue to the internal auditor, um, I would like to show you a sample of our engagement letter from um, our audit of June 30, 2020. I think it would help you understand um, and uh, be from, become familiar with um, the communications that we, um, that we will provide to you going forward. 
So uh, this is one, this one was for June 30, 2020, and it's dated June 9, 2020, addressed to the honorable members of the city council. Mm -hmm. And then the first few par paragraphs here discuss the um, scope of the audits. Um, this one says we are going to do a financial audit. We are going to also do a compliance audit or the single audit. Um, it states uh, what our procedures uh, will be and uh, any procedures that we are going to apply to required supplementary information, as well as other supplementary information that are not required. Um, there's also reference to the uh, schedule of expenditures of federal awards and the data collection form that is required uh, when we are doing a single audit. Mm -hmm. um, so those are um, those um, paragraphs are important for you to know what to expect uh, from the auditor when you're seeing like, um, you know, the CAFA, for example, has many elements. Uh, there's the introductory section, there's financial section, there's statistical section. Um, the auditor doesn't really audit all of them and we don't um, usually, we will not provide an opinion on sections that we did not really audit but that will be included in um, the audit report as well as in this engagement letter. So, um, and then, and then um, on page three here, we, um, we state the standards that we follow for the audit, um, any limitations of the audit, um, our consideration of internal control, as well as the reports to be issued. And then there's also a special section on the single audit, which is the audit of major program compliance. Um, that's, uh, as you know, the single audit relates to the city's compliance with requirements of major federal programs. And then the longest part of this engagement letter really relates to management's responsibilities. And this is important to you because uh, your role is to oversee that management acknowledges its responsibilities and that they have the capability to perform those responsibilities. So there's 23 items listed here. Um, sometimes there will be more, sometimes they would be less, but uh, these are pretty basic, um, pretty straightforward. I'm not gonna read them. <laughs> you can read them later. Um, the main thing to remember is that the CAFR and all the statements, uh, the notes and the schedules included within the CAFR um, are managements. The only thing that is ours or the auditors is the audit report. So um, when, um, when you look at that CAFR, we only have three or four pages of it really. Uh, internal control and compliance are also management's responsibilities. Um, the auditor's responsibility is to report to you what we found when we did our uh, procedures. So, um, and then uh, in this engagement letter, we also list the non-attest services, which I um, mentioned earlier. Um, there's a few of them. I'm not going to read them. You can go over them uh, later on. And then at the end, uh, we have some uh, portion on the fees and other administrative matters, including timing of the audit, uh, staffing and such. Uh, and then uh, signatures, you're, uh, you're required to, uh, one of you have to, has to uh, re uh, sign the um, engagement letter and acknowledge for the city. So that's uh, all I have on the uh, external auditor. I can go forward to the, ex to the internal auditor if you don't have any questions. Any questions, uh, council members? Uh, okay, I don't see any, let's go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on the internal auditor, I think, I, you know, sometimes I feel like I wanna be the internal auditor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 because um, 
the internal auditor actually sees more of um, the city than we do. Um, so they, they um, have more um, uh, insight into your operations, the, into the performance of the departments, um, as well as um, you know, the operations of the city. So um, your role in the internal auditor is um, mainly uh, not just the oversight actually, because the, the city council identified this committee as providing direction to the internal audit auditor. So um, you hired your internal auditor, I think, like in November or something uh, this year. The, uh, this will probably be the second internal auditor that you've hired. Um, congratulations for doing that because not all cities actually have internal auditors. Mm. Um, so you will be more involved um, with the internal auditor more so than the external auditor because you will be directing the internal auditor. The resolution that was approved by the city council back in, you know, maybe two, three years ago uh, states that the uh, finance and governance committee uh, is supposed to approve the internal auditor's work plan, uh, meet with the internal auditor every two months to review the internal auditor's priorities and current status, and um, also amend the priority order of existing work as well as to authorize new work. Mm -hmm. So the internal auditor um, can also be directed by the committee to investigate incidents that may come out of the fraud hotline. So, um, in addition to the, that direction from the city council, uh, the, the committee we think should also be aware of the internal auditor's quality control. So just like um, uh, the external auditors having quality control and uh, the city having internal control, uh, the internal auditor has to, um, undergo a quality assessment as well. So a quality assessment is like a peer review of, you know, uh, an in, from an independent third party who's qualified to perform that. Uh, and they provide a review of the internal auditor. This is a critical part of your oversight role that um, sometimes uh, that's overlooked just like, you know, um, audit committees have to look at the peer review and external auditor. Um, the internal auditors have this quality assessment report as well. Um, finally, uh, the other role that you have to do with the internal auditor is that you must have an evaluation of them on a periodic basis. Um, I, if you go to the next slide, I can um, provide more insight as far as how you're going to evaluate your internal auditor. Um, in order to do that, uh, you need to be aware of some of the things to expect from them. So um, I believe that the city's plan is to have one department audited every six years. So each department audited every six years and Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Sherry, if that is incorrect. Um, you will be setting the, the, the committee will be setting the internal auditors um, audit priorities, um, like uh, which department to audit first or second or so forth. Uh, the scope of their audit could be limited to a certain um, uh, parameters or they could be very comprehensive. So that is something that you have to determine and provide direction to the internal auditor. Um, a, a few things that the internal auditors can do. Uh, internal auditors can look into the operations of a department through performance audits. Uh, the performance audits can provide you with some insight on how the department has achieved certain metrics. Um, they can do compliance audits. 
uh, which will report on whether the department is complying with certain policies of the city uh, or policies um, from an outside agency, like a federal agency, for example. Can I, can I share something there? Um, it, um, you said um, that a, a department should be audited maybe every six years. Uh, we auditing for policies and procedures or non-financial items to make sure that they're following um, that their employees come in on time or, or they're performing what the tasks that were given uh, by the management. Is that what, you, what we're looking at? So uh, that the, the scope of that audit of each department will be up to you. Oh, okay. as, as the um, audit committee that's in charge of the internal auditors, uh, you can tell them go and audit um, um, say the housing department mm -hmm. and see how they're running their, um, you know, probably housing grants okay. uh, that is coming from the federal government. Or you can say, okay, let's audit internal uh, in, in environmental resources, mm -hmm. um, ER, and um, see if they're complying with policies regarding cash receipts. Okay. So it could be very limited or it could be comprehensive. And, and, uh, and we'd have to develop the metrics for them to, to ascertain to see if they're following that policy. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, they can also conduct internal control reviews um, where the objective is to see implementation of internal controls that are were adopted by the city. Um, um, so it, it could be it could be a lot of things. Okay. And so every year, um, I would suggest to have like some kind of a focus uh, audit plan for the internal auditor. Uh, management can help you with that um, planning and see, you know, which, which um, departments, you know, you would want to audit, what types of audit they would be, um, as well as uh, input from the internal auditor themselves. And, and also, I think additionally, this is probably a managerial thing, they can compare from year to year, the metrics and follow, see if how they, are they increasing, decreasing, or are they following uh, the rules or, mm -hmm. and so forth, so they can compare. Yes. Okay. That's, that's um, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then aside from the scope and nature of the audits, uh, you should also set uh, additional parameters like timing of the procedures and deadlines to complete each project. Um, if you want to follow like the six year rotation um, from department to department, um, you can set, you know, the 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 timelines over six years if that's what you want, or you can just do it annually. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, and finally, when you are evaluating the internal auditors, um, take a look at the the you know their their reports and see how they are uh, providing you guidance regarding internal control and compliance regarding operations. So are they offering um, you know, good advice or good counsel as far as best practices? Or are they you know, just giving you a report with no recommendations? Um, so those are something that um, you want to look at from, um, from you know, period to period. Okay. So any questions? Council you... members, um, Turan, Council Member Turan, are you muted? Yes, yeah. thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if this question would go to Ms. Uh, Casareno or maybe Ms. Klima or other city staff, but you had mentioned that there is a um, six year rotation for, for audits of departments. That's what it sounds like the city's elected to do. If I'm understanding that correctly, does that mean, for example, the housing department, if the housing department were audited this year for compliance with their grants, then six years from now, they'd be um, audited again. 
And then in that interim, there'd be different departments during that time. Is that correct? Uh, council member, um, this is Sherry Klima. I, our current process right now, we have an on-call contract. Mm -hmm. We don't have a comprehensive internal audit program right now. Mm -hmm. um, so we have the opportunity for you to ask for or for management to ask for particular audits. But um, what uh, Ms. Casarino was referring to is a program that we would like to, we have proposed to you and we would like to bring forward. And if we, uh, if you all accept uh, the proposal that, that we are bringing forward, the, the concept would be every six years, there would be a rotation. So there would be approximately two departments per year that would be audited. And um, their priority would be up to you ultimately, but would be guided by, we would be putting out a questionnaire every year to the departments mm -hmm. to, and this is, um, we spoke with a county auditor controller and he had a similar um, setup where he puts out a questionnaire that kind of alerts um, us to where some of the weaknesses may be or some of the concerns might be. And then we would make a recommendation to you um, as to sort of the, the schedule. We proposed a six year rotation because we thought one large department and one small department Makes per sense. year might be a, a manageable mm -hmm. workload. But of course, it could be more or less rigorous than that. And, and I think too, um, uh, council member, I think it's important because they'll get prep for, it, uh, prep for it and they'll be ready for it and make sure that they're following those policies yeah. and so forth. And to set up the metrics to compare from year to year and to make sure that they're following the city guidelines, which I think are really important. You know. Thank you for that clarification. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and I, I, I do have a, just a quick- Council uh, Basua. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a quick clarification. Um, we do have different auditors for the housing authority, I do believe. So they do have their own audits and I do believe they're a little bit more stringent on HUD requirements when it comes to that. Um, so when we receive these reports, I, I don't believe the housing authority is um, part of these. Am I correct, Ms. Klima? Yeah, there's an, they get external audits with a different auditor. Yeah, but the, yes, council uh, member. the councilwoman is talking about HUD. HUD has their own auditing procedures, but then the city has their own uh, uh, auditing uh, procedures also. That's correct, right. Mayor. Right. That's, that's a good question, uh, Councilwoman. Okay. Let's go ahead and continue. Okay. So um, I, I, since you mentioned the uh, County of Ventura, Sherry, I wanted to show uh, the committee um, their, their internal audit plan for fiscal year 2020, 2021. Um, so please bear in mind that the county has like a full fledged internal audit, you know, department division. Um, there's probably nine or 10 people there. So obviously their plan is very comprehensive and uh, it covers a lot of different things. But I think that it would be a good, um, what I would say source or reference for members of the committee to see what the elements are um, of an internal audit plan as well as um, you know, what, what the objectives as well as, as well as what the results could be. Um, so, I, I encourage you to take a look at their website. Um, there's a, actually, a, they have examples of uh, internal audit reports there, or um, I wanted to, uh, to see also here, um, you know, the part, their part year performance, they say uh, they have 12 audit reports uh, containing 72 recommendations, 100% agreement rate with departments, um, $60,000 in cost savings, uh, new issues that were handled through their hotline. So just like very, um, uh, I think very um, critical 
metrics that um, you know you can um, hold your internal auditor accountable. So and, and that's, a, that's what I was talking about uh, comparing to the prior year performance as you know, and uh, Jeff Berg is a really good person to work with there at the at the county of interim. Yeah. Um, all, of, all of the counties in California have their own auditor controller, so That's right. um, they are supposed to have internal audit divisions. Um, you, if you don't like the Ventura County, you can look at other counties as well. They all have this. So um, very, very important to, um, you know, just um, reference material, I think. They have some good plans, you know. Mm -hmm. so thank you. Mm -hmm. So that is pretty much what I have on internal auditor. Um, Hong, if you you can go ahead and take over. We have two more areas that we wanted to uh, go over with you. A uh, high level, uh, which is risk management. Um, like Mary explained really well, um, you know, the risk uh, management process is, is a process of uh, in the graph uh, on the right is a process of identifying the various risks that are applicable to your city as a whole um, but you can be as um, detailed as to you know certain departments or transactions cycle so what the key is is to um, be, have a comprehensive overview an assessment of the risk that might be out there like mary mentioned either internally or externally um, that uh, would uh, affect your city so um, these could be in a, a number of areas um, you know, uh, we're talking about uh, could be disaster preparedness, or if you might want to say uh, even pandemic preparedness at this point, as we all learn, right. um, you know, but legislatively, uh, things that new laws that have passed that might affect your city and your, your city's operations heavily, or certain departments heavily, how that would impact your overall operations. Um, any risk that might cause business or operational departmental uh, interruptions of services. Um, there are new emerging risks, uh, specifically as it relates to cyber risk. Um, you know, IT related air items that that could affect your city very heavily as well. Um, then, uh, of course, uh, as, as part of, you know, your public service to your community, uh, you know, there are social issues um, that, you know, Black Lives Matter or, you know, various things that, uh, you know, you might want to address as a council uh, or uh, an, as an arm of the council and the finance and governance committee that how it would affect the departments that you are directly uh, in uh and uh, have oversight over but also the rest of the city um and that it could be a risk that would um impact the city either financially or you know operationally like i said that could cause a disruption of service which um of course you know is is one of the main functions of the cities of providing your your residents the services that they're looking for um, also, not to forget um, is, of course, fraud risk. Uh, I think, you know, management and uh, your departments are, um, are able to help you with that significantly, um, the, the, the types of fraud that Mary has already discussed, and how they might impact your reporting um, on a day-to-day -day basis or even, uh, you know, periodically or annually. Um, so you as the Finance and Governance Committee are, are, are best suited um, to oversee this role because you're, uh, you're an extension of um, council uh, as in overall, uh, have direct uh, communication with management and the integral departments uh, that affect the, the city operations, as well as your community. So uh, you as a uh, as your, the elected officials of your various um, districts, um, 
have the ear of what might be larger concerns um, of the city and overall. Um, so once you've identified risk, uh, important is the risk evaluation process. So, uh, you know, this is a very much um, specific to you as a city and as a, a council and management as well, what your various risk tolerances are, or, you know, how likely these risks are uh, to uh, happen, um, uh, how uh, to affect your city, um, you know, uh, flooding, uh, might be much more significant to you than any, you know, city that is in the Central Valley or, you know, in our Inland Empire, uh, you know, or, um, so there are just various risks that you would have to assess and evaluate in determining of how you want to be treating them. So how, depending on the various um, risks you've identified, and how you've um, scored them on terms of how toler um, how much tolerance you have uh, relating to this, uh, how much exposure the city has um, to the potential risk, you might want to be um, addressing them with specific treatment um, yeah. to, to address these risks. So, um, once you have conceptualized the treatment and uh, most likely you will be doing this alongside with management uh, because of their knowledge of the overall operations and their experience um, in assisting you uh, with this, you could put a risk management implementation plan in place. And um, like Mary mentioned, this is uh, integral with your internal control procedures, uh, various policies and other procedures that you might put in place. Um, you want to be thinking of um, of putting reserves in place of fiscal management, or um, you know, would you be relying on insurance? What is is insurance? Are you covered by insurance, or do you need other sources to or, or, or processes to um, to uh, uh, address these risks. Once yeah. you have your plan in place uh, to address these risks, um, like Mary also mentioned, continuous review and monitoring of your plan is important to make sure that you know uh, your your plan is still efficiently addressing, uh, effectively as well addressing these risks that you've identified. Um, so. The, the control and monitoring of um, the mitigation of these risks uh, is very important as well. We will go over all of these in more depth and hope um, we'll are looking to help you facilita facilitate a risk management. Um, you, uh, the, the risk management has already been approved. So that's the most recent policy that was approved. Um, uh, by city council. So uh, there is a, a process in, uh, or a policy in place where you have to uh, at least uh, uh, do a risk assessment annually. Any questions? You know, I think you said something important that uh, the we are looking at the reserves, which are really important because uh, potentially we have a pandemic right now, as you know, and and we're is we're going to have an earthquake, whether we like it or not, it's going to happen. And the sea level rise too, which I think is important too. And I know we have fires in our in the mountain, nearby mountains, but last time we had the, the Thomas fire here in Ventura, yeah. we were, we had a lot of ash come into the city of Oxnard, you know, and those kind of risks, I think that we need to, to look for. And of course, you know, we need to monitor, work with the, with our fire department, with our police department, and all those risk assessments are things that we, we need to look at, you know, so that's really important. Council members, any questions? Okay, uh, Tehran, you got to unmute yourself, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Saragosa. I just wanted to, uh, Thank you for this overview of risk management real quickly, because um, 
you know, without getting into it too deeply, I would imagine that in the work that you do, you may come across municipalities or clients who do not have plans like this in place or a continuum like what's put up there on the slide and are very reactive to things that happen as opposed to being proactive and having some semblance of a plan in place for if this were to happen, what will we do? What will we do? What are the protocols? What are the procedures? And um, as you can see in the uh, in the slide there, evaluating that risk, going through the treating of it, uh, looking at the implementation, then reviewing that plan to make sure, it, see what, what worked and what didn't so it can be fine tuned for the next time something might happen. And as our mayor had mentioned, uh, there are things that have happened that uh, with the pandemic and fires, things that um, are on a very grand scale that affects everybody. And if we have plans in place to mitigate the negative effects from that or have plans in place to continue for continuity of the organization, then um, you know we're better off than anyone who's reacting to it and didn't know it was gonna happen when those things came up. So thank you for going over this. And I know we do have a plan because I know our city manager is ahead of the, the uh, risk uh, management uh, part here with working with the fire department, right, uh, Cherie? And they, he's working with the fire department in case of disasters and so forth. They, they have the, uh, that risk assessment. That they, is that correct? Uh, do you mean mayor, the EO? Uh, no, our city manager is, is part of the risk assessment here for the, for the city of Oxnard. They, they meet with the fire department, they meet with the police department in case of a disaster and so forth. Right, yes. So we have that here, but, but thank you anyway, I think, and, and having the funding I think is extremely important with the reserves. And I think uh, Measure E is gonna really help us out with that too. Okay, we'll okay. go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, this is the final topic. Uh, also, again, oversight of ethics and compliance. Um, this is integral to uh, uh, your internal control environment, um, directly tied to the tone at the top. Um, you, you know, where you, as um, a body of uh, an extension of the city council and a finance and governance committee have direct influence over um, with uh, not just your employees, but the community as well. So uh, promotion of ethics and compliance um, will, uh, will, um, uh, encourage uh, more transparency, uh, communications, and trust uh, in in the community, but uh, you know within your organization of of uh, things being uh, managed and handled um, properly. Um, so uh, actually, especially for your city, just very recently, uh, with the passage of Measure B. Uh, you know, it just emphasizes also how committed you are as a, a you know, a, a, an organization to, um, you know, accountability, accountability and ethics. Um, Measure B specifically addressed acceptance of gifts, campaign finance, um, transparency in procurement, you know, major contracts and financial reporting, um, term limits, um, for the various positions. So, you know, um, we, we, as uh, your external auditors, promote um, sound policies and procedures, but what we cannot affect really well is the tone at the top, right? We cannot control what uh, council members say or do, um, but we do encourage, of course, uh, sound practices that promote, uh, you know, ethics so that there's no corruption. Um, you know, you won't be, uh, you don't, you're not uh, in the news for, uh, you know, uh, raids or legal cases or, uh, or, or uh, you know, very negative um, items that, you know, could, even that could potentially affect you financially, you know, your bond ratings, all of these are tied together um, as your overall control environment. So um, 
or even you know increased scrutiny from outside agencies, your federal agencies. So if they, uh, whether it's at a state level or a federal level, they do look out for these things. They are uh, they make it a point um, uh, to be aware of what the environment is like in various cities and addressing them as high risk cities or low risk cities. So you want to be on the low risk uh, end of things so that you aren't um, scrutinized or subjected for uh, to closer investigations, um, which is just very time consuming um you know and and maybe even costly if you lose funding so um we cannot speak enough of um about ethics and compliance um you have tools in place to um you know effectively address this uh like i mentioned your policies your conflict of interest policies your measure b um which is a, a, part of your ordinance now. Um, and then, like we mentioned here, your hotline. So um, auditors, we just come in at year end and it's actually uh, published um, that, you know, uh, we, we're, we're not an effective method to catch fraud. Uh, the most effective method is through, you know, your your day-to-day -day processes of procedures and monitoring or reporting uh, flagging um, uh, by uh, you know either employees or you know your community um, of, of things that uh, might be uh, fraudulent um, and and your hotline will help you with that and uh, based on what you uh, are what um, make uh, aware of, uh, again, your internal auditor could be a tool for you to address these risks or uh, these allegations um, and, and do investigations on your behalf um, as to promote uh, transparency and um, in your community. So um, any questions on this? Thank you, Thank you. Um, council members. Any questions? Any final questions? Um, Tehran, Councilman Tehran. Thank you, uh, Mayor Saragosa. Just real quickly, um, thank you very much for that, Ms. Nguyen. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, to hear the external auditor provide such positive comments and um, around Measure B, which passed. Um, I was not on council uh, back in uh, the March primary when that went before the voters. Uh, but I'm happy to hear that the uh, support of the external auditors really supports what the voters uh, put forward and, and moved with the city for those um, for those uh, controls they have for our uh, for our city. So thank you very much for stating that. And that's all my comments, uh, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, um, Councilmember Basua. I've got no comments. Um, thank you so much for um, the this presentation. Um, greatly appreciate it and I hope um, the viewers um, were able to get a little bit of an insight of you know all the work that goes on um, to get these documents um, to the council and making sure that our city is compliant. So thank, thank you very much. And I, I finally I want to thank to you know the, uh, the committee, the Finance and Governors Committee, you know we have quite a responsibility and I think what you have here that, that last is ethics, accountability, principles, integrity, and values are extremely important for all of us because I want our residents to know that this training is really important for all of us and to know that we are going to be taking care of their funds, taking care of their taxes, and making sure that uh, they understand that we're transparent and that we're going to try the, our best to, to comply. We're not going to try. We're going to comply with all the laws and rules. And the internal and external uh, auditors are extremely important. And I think this training is going to help us a lot. Uh, one thing that I like is if we have any questions, we can call you. And I'm sure we can also talk to our finance people and Cherie and, and Kevin and, of course, our city attorney and also our, our city manager. Thank you. And I think uh, this is really, really good educational. And as, as we said before, you know, I've been a policymaker for many, many years, but you learn something every time that, that, that we have some kind of training and that. Uh, 
And I, I know we're going to have ad additional three uh, other uh, training sessions, but thank you so much for the excellent work. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you again. Have a good evening. Okay, and to uh, council members, I believe that we don't have a community service and public safety housing. So our next meeting uh, committee is gonna be the public works and transportation at, at 8.30. So we're adjourned as far as this uh, committee is concerned, but we'll be back uh, with the public works and uh, transportation committee at 8.30. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>